What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to another epic video. This time I'm going to be showing you how to recover your highlights in DaVinci Resolve. And no, we're not going to be salvaging highlights. We're going to be actually recovering highlights after grading a really, really push look because that would happen. We are going to create a look that's just really contrasty, really out there. And then you have to come up with a game plan to recover those highlights. So I'm going to show you the right way to do that. And uh, there's going to be two different techniques that I'm going to be using. One is particular to DaVinci Resolve 17, so get excited about that. Another one is my tried and tested. And for those that want to level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go-to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look. How to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much, much more. Link is in the description. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure that you're following me on Instagram and let's roll the intro. All right, let's get in here. And I have two different clips prepared for you guys to go through uh, two different techniques. And uh, first one is a very practical example. So many times you're going to be grading a shot that's going to be something like this, where we have practicals, which are these lights in the frame. These lights right here are these right there. These specular highlights that you see, this is what that is. Okay. And then we got to be careful of this right here. This is going to get blown out. Uh, we don't really have to necessarily worry about these because these are also specular highlights. If they blow out, that's totally fine. I want to make sure that I protect this. She's wearing a white shirt. So once we start pushing our contrast and juicing up the image, this is what's going to, you know, blow out easily. So we have to protect that. These are the things that we have to keep in mind before going in. OK, so I'm going to click on this guy so we can make this bigger a little bit and see what's happening. And I'm going to grab these and just pull it up a little bit. And now. Let's start with our node tree build out. So this was my first step here. I went ahead and added tons of contrast. Then I did my primaries to just bring up everything and just give it this crazy pushed look. And obviously one of the reasons to do that is so we can put the highlights into practice. And then I went in and uh, pulled out some of the detail in the shadows. I mean, it was getting lost quite a bit. So I just pulled it out a little bit, not too much. And you can see it here too, like opened it up a little bit. And then in my log, I actually uh, pulled up the highlights. So just like really added that punch, like see right here, you can feel that punch. It's kind of dull before and then added that punch. And then same thing on the low end uh, to really add more contrast. But then what that does is that, you know, now things are clipping, right? Went in here and just added a little bit of hue swing. So just took this yellow, this Fincher yellow and just added a touch of red in there. And then that helps with the skin a little bit too. Then went ahead and added glow to create this atmosphere. You know, it just really like, look at it, right? Like all of a sudden it just turns into this suspense film, if you will. And then we added some grain. It, this time I didn't go too far, you know, just a little bit. I mean, if I punch in and do before and after, if I do before, I'm going to hold it for a second. I'm going to do after. So, you know, nothing too crazy here. Okay. And now if we get close to these areas, we can see that it's kind of looking digital. If I go all the way before, we know that there is all this detail in here. But if I see it after, I mean, it's just kind of super clipped out digital and borderline distracting. Same thing is happening here. Now, once again, we don't need to bring this back because it was never there. It was clipped it was specular highlights. We're going to bring it back enough so it just takes away the emphasis from here. And uh, same thing here. I mean, it's just really, really, really pushed, right? So this is where we're at right now. And overall, it's looking good. But now we got to do some damage control. So first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to enable this, my highlight node. And let's go through our first step, which is going to be based on Luma Qualifier. I absolutely love this process, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. In here, I'm gonna hit Shift H and then just start adding a little bit of low soft, not too much, something like that for starters, and then start reducing that until we start grabbing just the highlighted areas. Okay. 
And I'm just really going for, so now we're grabbing the shirt, we're grabbing the specular highlights and uh, a little bit of the forehead, which was all important. I wanted to grab all of that. So now I'm just gonna come out, nothing happens, right? Everything is the same. If you look at the scopes, I mean, if I do before and after, nothing is really happening. This is where the magic is gonna happen. I'm gonna go under my highlight slider right here. And I'm gonna take this to start cranking it back. And now look at the scopes, what's happening. Just check out the scopes and you'll see we're making a big difference. And this is my favorite approach because it is just so natural. Because if I punch in now and look at her forehead and if I do before and after, you see like how it's just desaturated and super digital looking to how it's bringing back in that information evenly. And same thing happens if I come over here to her shirt, if I do before, clipped out, there's no information, and just look at all this detail that it's bringing back. Just look at it. It's bringing back all that detail, okay? So we're not done yet. This is the first step to kind of just start seeing the difference that, okay, it is actually working. And if I come over here and do before, and now if I do after, like, look at all the texture coming back. So it's bringing back so much detail. So already, like, it's almost like we're gaining, like, a stop or two stops, right? Now, what's interesting is that if I hit Shift H again and show you what's happening, now without even hitting Shift H, I'm gonna go back into my vectors and we can now mess around with two different parameters. One will be how much area we wanna affect and that's gonna happen in the low. If I just grab this and start pulling it back, see, like you can look in the scope, I'm affecting way more area, right? So that's one way to do it, which is pretty aggressive. I don't really go with that process. So I'm gonna hit Shift H and kind of go back where we were. But the thing that I really like is our low soft. Now, if I push our low soft and open it up a little bit, look how organic this is going to be. So now I'm gonna dial it back a little bit and keep it somewhere around here. And if I do before and after now, look at the scopes, how gentle it is. It is adding that film look, like look at this like how soft the roll off is and you can feel it everywhere. I mean, let's look at this, okay? This is gonna make the biggest difference. If we go right here and if I do before, look at how this is super digital and looks so ugly. And then after, look at the detail that it's bringing back, okay? And if we pull out, we can just see the difference that we're making, where we were before, where we are now. Again, guys, just remember, it's all about the subtleties. It's all about these little things. Like now we just went from like the super digital image, which uh, was shot on S1 Panasonic to like making it look super film-like, okay? So that would be one way that I would approach it. So that's our first way. Now let's jump into our second way and I'm gonna show you um, how to do that. So I'm just gonna add a version. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this particular node. So now we're back to where we started. If I go to our previous version, we have our first method, which is based on Luma. And this time I'm gonna show you a brand new method. So now we're in our HDR palette. And the beauty of this is that it's gonna blow your mind, okay? How simple it makes it and it's growing on me like crazy. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go under my light and I'm gonna drop it about half a stop. So you might think that, dude, it's affecting everything. This is too much. And that is very true. But look at the beauty of these zones. We can control where we want it to start. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change my zone. I'm going to say, hey, don't affect the bottom end. Leave that as is and really start making a dent on this top end. So I'm just going to park it somewhere around here. And guys, look at how fast this was, okay? We didn't have to qualify it. We didn't have to do any of that. I'm telling you, especially when you're like turning and burning, this HDR palette is unreal, okay? It's growing on me so freaking much. One thing that I didn't mention, which is you have to use the highlight recovery in a pre-corrector node, which means it has to come before you make any corrections. And that's because right now, this node is referring to your log image, which is this. So that has the most information. So this is the second way, and you can, uh, I'm sure, most of you are looking at it and going, why ever use this technique over that technique? 
And that's because I like to have more control and I am just so used to uh, going with this technique right here that I feel like I'm just so fast and comfortable, and especially when you have a panel, that I keep going back to this. Not to mention that you can mix and match. Sometimes you can do half and half, although it kind of defeats the purpose because low key, this is what's happening here. Because if I hit Shift H, I just did that, right? This is what HDR palette is doing too. Like when I take my zones and I move it around, Basically, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just like grabbing what I want to grab. So it's almost like the same effect, but still, um, this is just something that, you know, I started using, so I'm more used to it. This is what I go with usually, but I feel like HDR palette is something that I've been playing with a lot recently, and I'm absolutely loving it because you saw how fast it was. Now let's move on to this shot. And uh, same thing, I'm going to kill all of this and we're going to build it out and I'm going to show you what's really going on. So first of all, I'm in DaVinci Wide Gamut. So if I were to go in here first, it was set to this. So this is our RE log. Then I click right here. I went under input color space and I changed it to RE log C. So it converted it to Rec 709. Now we're sitting at Rec 709. Then I went in and I did a little bit of contrast and it was just too magenta. So I went in and did some temp and gave it a little bit of a look and then uh, really popped it, okay, uh, in my pop node and then uh, just whitened out his teeth and the hat and just like took out some of that dinge. So not too much. And then here worked on the grass a little bit just to kind of, again, pop him out. And uh, this is the node where I kind of overexposed it, like I kind of pushed it so you can see it here just for the purpose of like using our highlights and you know then seeing the difference and then in glow kind of pushed it too and uh let's just say that in this one we're going for that you know really poppy holiday commercial look and we just want it to be super overexposed we're going for that high key look so that's what's happening here okay so this is where we're at right now and we're going to try the same two methods we tried in the last shot but it's going to be a little bit different because now we're dealing with outdoors and stuff like that. So again, I'm just going to enable this node and then let's go back into our vectors and I'm going to start off at maybe like around 13 ish. I'm going to hit shift H and I'm going to start going and just make sure that I'm grabbing the highlights, highlighted areas like this right here. I'm going to come out of there. I'm going to go into my primaries. I'm going to take my highlights. I'm going to start cranking them back and just check out the scopes. So we're really easing it off and bringing that information back. And if I do before and after, uh, we can easily see that we recovered all that information. So if I come over here and I do overall before, we can see that it's pretty up there. I mean, it's borderline clipping. And then if I do after, now, if I take my highlights and turn it off, look at the scopes and look at right here, that information is gone, completely gone. And then when I bring it back, you can start seeing the creases, okay? So this is how you know, we're bringing a lot of information back. Look super digital, all that information is gone, boom, we're bringing it back. Again, just remember, the beauty is in modesty. When you're grading, you don't always have to go too far. It's not necessary, okay? So if I go right here and I do after, before, super clipped out, after, all that information is back. Same thing is happening with the hat up there. This is before. You know, just kind of distracting. And then after it brings all that information back. And look how easy it was. And we're pretty much done. Um, you know, we brought all that information back. And it just like eases off the entire image, okay? Now, if you think that, man, this is spilling a bit too much on his skin. And you don't want to do that much. Uh, you know, affect his skin that much. Then what we can do is go under low soft and kind of split the difference. So get to around 9-ish or 8-ish and uh, go in here, and now we're really just like not selecting his skin at all, and we're just affecting this area right there, and we can see it in the scopes as well, that it's working. So we're really restricting to just that area alone. I liked it before, it was blending in a little bit better, but it's your call. I was just giving you multiple scenarios here, okay? So once again, create a new version, hit base memory, so now we're back to where we started, and uh, this time we're gonna use, again, our HDR palette. And like the last time, 
Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. So it's going to be a blend of two things, highlights and specular, because it's really nuclear right here and specular highlights. Okay, so we're going to have to bring that back. So I'm going to start off with my highlights. I'm going to pull it down and look how much it's affecting. And uh, I'm going to bring it down to somewhere around here where it's looking natural, like his face. And then I'm going to take specular highlights and look at the scopes. Look at how clinical that is. And uh, I'm going to do before and after and see how much of that information it's bringing back. Now, if we go before to this version, to that version, we can clearly see that here, it's just kind of keeping this still clipped. It's not really bringing that information back. And that's what I meant by using the Luma qualifier, why I love it so much. Like, look, at it's bringing all this detail back. Whereas the HDR palette is not. I mean, it's giving you the illusion that it's bringing it back. So what do we have to do? We have to kind of mess around with it then, okay? And what we really need to do is in our specular highlights, we're going to have to take go under the zone and pull it back a little bit. So we really start affecting, like start bringing that detail back, right? So we don't want to overdo it, obviously. So if I go all the way back, zoom out, and I do before and after, um, obviously, I think we're going too far. So I'm going to go back in my highlights and kind of recover that, pull it up a little bit, go under my specular highlights and just come, come up a little bit. And what I really want to make sure is that, go back in my highlights and lift it up. I just want to make sure that, you know, I am not affecting too much of the entire image and I'm just really focusing on what needs to be changed. So if I go back to my Luma qualifier way to my HDR palette, both of them are bringing back information. There's a little bit more punch in the HDR palette. It's really going to come down to your preference. Both of them are doing the job, bringing the information back. We can see it right here. Personally, I'm liking the Luma qualifier here, but if you think that this is really keeping the pop there and the detail, then feel free to use the HDR palette. So here were the two quickest ways to recover your highlights without degrading your image. And this is the proper way to do it. You always have to do it pre-correction, okay? This has to be the first node where you do highlight recovery. So it is not dictated by what happens afterwards. Now let's check out the final look in full screen. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. And this is why I keep telling you guys that understanding node tree is everything. So do not forget to check out the training, free training, one hour long, link is down below. It will teach you everything about what each node does and also how to build the perfect node tree. On that note, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you guys in the next video.